For which crimes were the defendants found guilty? On 19 October 2016, Trial Chamber 7 found Jean-Pierre Bemba Gombo, Emme Kilolo Muzamba, Jean-Jacques Manjenda Kabongo, Fidel Baba Lawando, and Narcisse Arido guilty of various offenses against the administration of justice. These offenses related to the false testimonies of defense witnesses in another case against Mr. Bemba before the ICC. Interfering with witnesses and other offenses against the administration of justice are serious offenses criminalized under the Rome Statute because they hinder the proper functioning of the court. The ICC has already brought three cases in relation to such offenses. Which penalties did Trial Chamber 7 pronounce for each of the accused? Jean-Pierre Bemba Gombo was sentenced in total to one additional year imprisonment. No deduction of time previously spent in detention was ordered, mainly since the time to be considered had already been deducted by Trial Chamber 3 in the main case. The Chamber ordered that the sentence be served consecutively to Mr. Bemba's existing sentence in the main case. In addition, the Chamber fined Mr. Bemba 300,000 euros to be paid to the court within three months of its decision and thereafter transferred to the Trust Fund for Victims. Emeki Lolo Muzamba was sentenced in total to two years and six months imprisonment. The time Mr. Kilolo previously spent in detention was deducted, namely since his arrest on the 23rd of November 2013 until the 22nd of October 2014, the day where he was released provisionally. The Chamber ordered the suspension of the operation of the remaining time of imprisonment for a period of three years so that the sentence shall not take effect if Mr. Kilolo pays the fine as imposed by the Chamber and unless during that period Mr. Kilolo commits another offence anywhere that is punishable with imprisonment, including offences against the administration of justice. In addition, the Chamber fined Mr. Kilolo 30,000 euros, which must be paid to the court within three months of its decision and thereafter transferred to the Trust Fund for Victims. Jean-Jacques Manjenda Kabongo was sentenced in total to two years imprisonment. The time he spent previously in detention was deducted, namely since his arrest on the 23rd of November 2013 until the 31st of October 2014, the day where he was released provisionally. The Chamber ordered the suspension of the operation of the remaining term of imprisonment for a period of three years, so that the sentence shall not take effect unless during that period Mr. Mangenda commits another offence anywhere that is punishable with imprisonment, including offences against the administration of justice. Narcisse Arido was sentenced in total to 11 months imprisonment. The time Mr. Arido spent previously in detention was deducted namely since his arrest on the 23rd of November 2013 until the 22nd of October 2014, the day where he was released provisionally. Since the imposed sentence is equivalent to the credit to be applied for the period of time he has been in custody, the Chamber considered the sentence of imprisonment as served. Fidel Baba Lawandu was sentenced in total to six months imprisonment. The time he spent previously in detention was deducted, namely since his arrest on the 24th November 2013 until the 23rd of October 2014, the day where Mr. Babala was released provisionally. Since the imposed sentence is less than the credit to be applied for the period of time he has spent in custody, the Chamber considered the sentence of imprisonment as served. Which criteria were taken into account by the trial chamber to make its decision? The chamber identified all relevant factors for each convicted person, namely the gravity of the offenses and his individual circumstances. It also considered mitigating and aggravating circumstances as the case may be. In addition, the convicted person's individual circumstances, such as their good behavior throughout the trial, cooperation with the court, family circumstances, absence of prior convictions and other personal circumstances were taken into account. 
Upon identification of the relevant factors, the chamber then weighed and balanced all factors in order to determine the appropriate sentence. Thus, in its decision, the chamber considered the gravity of the offenses that were the basis for conviction of the person concerned and the culpable conduct of the convicted person concerned and finally the individual circumstances of this convicted person. In determining an appropriate sentence, the chamber was guided by two considerations. The sentence must reflect the culpability of the convicted person and the sentence must be proportionate to the offense. Can the decision on penalties be appealed? The prosecution and the defense may appeal the decision on sentence within 30 days. If any of the parties do not file an appeal, today's decision of trial chamber 7 would then become final.